everybody, this is Jordan from PictureMonk.com and welcome to Podcast 60, episode 60 of the podcast. Um, I, I missed last week, just got back from vacation, uh, still trying to get photos together and all this kind of stuff from the stuff that was taken last week uh, or the week before last. And uh, so uh, just kind of been concentrating on that and uh, the new uh, the new Picture Monk Nation Facebook page or the Facebook group. I've uh, been kind of working on that a little bit and just getting some stuff together for you guys. So I uh, kind of missed last week, but I'm, I'm, I'm rounding out some questions this week because uh, it's been a little bit since I've had an opportunity to go back and answer uh, listener questions. So that's what's going to be uh, this episode. It's, uh, I'm just kind of concentrating on that. So, uh, But first, let's talk about some news that has happened uh, and probably the biggest thing that's happened uh, since I think they did the uh, the keynote, and, and if you know what I'm saying about keynote, then you probably talk, hear I'm talking about Apple. Uh, but I think the keynote was uh, Monday, uh, the 13th, I believe. And so they uh, they announced that they're doing uh, uh, you know the iOS 10. And if you're an Android person and you hate me talking about Apple, just bear with me for a little bit. Um, but uh, but I have an iOS device, so I'm going to talk about Apple for a little bit. So uh, they talked about new features of iOS 10 that's coming out in the fall, and uh, one thing they talked about, uh, or the, they 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 hinted at on the screen on the on the keynote presentation, but they never really mentioned, was the fact that they're going to allow raw editing on the phones. Um, it's still kind of up in the air on what exactly that will entail. Like if you have to edit the raw file on the phone just to get, you know, to use like a, a proprietary Apple editing software to only edit the raw files, or you can use Lightroom Mobile, Snapseed, stuff like that. Uh, or even if you can just download the raw file uh, and, and uh, drag it into Lightroom on your desktop, maybe that'll be an opportunity to, uh, to be had. But I don't think they're going to, I don't think they're going to announce anything particularly like that in the in the near future but uh but it was cool to see that there i know there's probably a lot of um uh android folks that have been able to do that for a while but it's kind of cool to finally be able to do that on the on the phone and that again is coming this fall uh petapixel did an article about it where they kind of mentioned a couple things about it um so if you want to go check that out you can go to the show notes i have a link to that and it's picturemonk.com slash pmp 060 for episode 60. So that was the basic uh, the the basic news thing for this week. It wasn't really a lot uh, that was going on that, that that you know I really cared about. I think this news thing is really on the stuff that I care about. It's not it's not trying to update you on everything that's happening in photography. So, um, but uh, but as you can tell from the the uh, the title of the podcast, user questions this week. I'm just trying to do a little catch up on those because I do have a bank of them still. So uh, if your question is answered this week, congratulations. So uh, I don't have a listener question of the week because uh, just answering a bunch of questions here, but uh, let's go ahead and roll into it. The first question is from a Wilson B from Atlanta, Georgia, and they said, is there an easy way to connect your camera uh, from your photo wirelessly? I have not looked at these. I just pulled a bunch. Uh, is there an easy way to connect your Oh, okay. Is there an easy way to control? There you go. That's probably what you meant. Control your camera from your phone wirelessly. Um, yeah, there's a couple ways to do it. Uh, they might not be as cost effective, but uh, you can control your camera from your phone. Number one, if your camera has Wi-Fi built into it, uh, the camera I'm recording on the Canon 60, the Canon 6D. There you go. Uh, it does have wireless built in, uh, Wi-Fi built in, so I can con control the camera from my iPad, uh, my phone, and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's a it's a beast to set up because it you know you got to worry about the phone connecting the camera, and sometimes it says it's connected but it's not connected, so it's 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 not really that intuitive, but it does work. Um, you could uh, you can get a Cam Ranger. Cam Ranger is a popular one. It's just a little uh, device that you plug into your camera and you download the Cam Ranger app and. Uh, you'll be able to do a bunch of stuff from your phone. Um, but probably the most effective way and the most inexpensive way is uh, is what I found from the uh, the guys over at Trigger Trap. Um, I haven't tested this fully. I have connected it to my phone, but I haven't really played around with it in depth. But uh, if you have uh, uh, an iOS device, another iOS device, what you could do is um, plug your phone into your 
uh, trigger trap, which a trigger trap is just a, a, a cord, basically. Uh, it's a cord that you plug into your phone and, and, and all the apps on the phone uh, from the trigger trap app, there you go, uh, all the apps on, on, the, on the features on that app will allow you to do a bunch of stuff to your, your uh, camera like you know, shutter release, time lapse mode, star trail mode, uh, sound detection, all this kind of stuff. But they do have a, a feature where you can connect your uh, device to another device. So if you have an iPad or something like that, you can connect your phone to, uh, to your camera to the phone and then the phone can then talk to another iOS device and you can kind of control that way. Like I said, I haven't played with it that much, so I don't know if it you know, it is fully working or not, but uh, I have connected it to it and just found out that it worked. Um, uh, if you don't want to worry about doing it to a phone, you can actually plug your easily, very easily, plug your camera up to uh, a, a, you know a laptop and do um, do the tethering capture from a from a laptop. Uh, I actually have a video coming out about that just to show you the easiest way to do that and how how easy it actually is to tether. Um, and so, you know, there's easy ways to do a bunch of that stuff, but I, I would think the, the most inexpensive way to do it is the trigger trap, because I believe that's like 30 bucks or something like that. And so, uh, that'll, I'll have a link to the trigger trap on, um, on Amazon. Uh, there's a couple different models, so just make sure, I'm going to link the one that I have, but just make sure the one, if you go get it, the one is compatible with your phone and your camera. So, that's just a little caveat there. Uh, so thanks, Wilson, for your question. Uh, this uh, next question is from a Tommy, uh, no last name, but just Tommy, and uh, from Sydney, Australia. And it says, do you have any marketing tips for someone starting their own business? Uh, I feel like I've kind of covered some of these before, uh, this marketing stuff a little bit. Not in depth, but I've, I've kind of covered it. Um, man, uh, there's a lot. <laughs> that's, that's the main thing. Um, it doesn't say what kind of photography business you have. Uh, I'm just going to assume it's the most popular type, which is portraits and weddings and stuff. Um, uh, man. Start doing as much shooting as you can. That's one thing. Um, but if you already have a couple things under your belt, uh, you know, you got a good portfolio and stuff like that, um, hit up Facebook uh, and try to find people that have been engaged. Uh, you can do a Facebook ad maybe for like five bucks. Uh, depending on how many people you want to reach, but you can target people that just got engaged. That's one thing, and you can uh, have an ad going towards them, and uh, maybe do a promotion of you know 250 bucks off of your wedding thing, something like that. Um, one of the things that is that I've been wanting to do for a while, uh, and uh, it's not really cost effective because you're basically giving a book away, is um, is, is getting a couple cheap like eight by eight books um, or postcards or something like that something that is tangible that they can take and not just like a business card or, or something like that but something that is uh, that, that is memorable um, so a postcard but a, a larger postcard which shows multiple photos uh, a book is the ultimate one but it's you're, it's basically like twenty dollars a pop and those are only for serious clients um, so that might be something that you have in an office or something like that. You just have a bunch laying out on the table and, and they can take it with them. You know, if you have a, con a consult together or something like that. Uh, um, but yeah, I mean, uh, SEO on the website's big. Make sure you're on Google listings. Um, it's, it's kind of too much to get into in this one question. So I, I might, I might have to break off and do another podcast about that. I'm not. I'm not sure, but it, basically, if you're if you're doing that kind of uh, photography, word of mouth is a big thing. Uh, that I mean, it's it's kind of cliche to say that, but it really is the big thing. It's it's the most important thing. Uh, if you got people's friends saying this person's amazing, then yeah, they're going to choose you most likely. Uh, so sorry if that didn't answer your question that much, Tommy. But uh, it's kind of a really big, you know, really big question for such a small time on the podcast. Um, so let's roll into the next one. This is from Pete H. from Newcastle. Uh, and uh, they wrote, Do you know of an easy way to record audio wirelessly when doing an interview? I'm trying to do this as cheap as possible. Um, what I'm doing right now is pretty cheap. Uh, that's, that's one thing. It records decent audio. It's the, uh, the Rode Mic, uh, yeah, Rode Mic Lav. 
I think that's what it's called. Uh, so lavalier mic, so this little light mic that you see right here, uh, it's connected to my phone, uh, and I'm recording it on the mode, mode, wow, the Rode mic app. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, just records uh, all the, all the audio, audio that I need that my phone can hold. And, um, and that's about it. It's, you, got, you got some cool controls that you can do if you're really fancy with audio. But uh, that's pretty cheap. It's not that expensive of a mic. I don't remember how much it is, but again, I'll put it on the, uh, the website uh, for the show notes here if you, in case you want to check that out. But probably the cheapest way, if you have a, I know, that, I know especially with iPhones this works, um, the, probably the cheapest way is the headphones uh, that come with, uh, come with the Apple mics or the Apple headphones. Uh, you know, it's got that little thing on the white, the, the little white thing where you can control the audio and all that kind of stuff. There's a mic built in there and you can do the same thing I'm doing, but with headphones, basically. It might not look as professional, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, if you're just, if this is just a, uh, a person that you really just want to record audio from and don't have to worry about video, they can just kind of loop the headphones down the, down the collar of their shirt to where the mic is poking out and you you can record there and it's totally wireless cuz you're just recording to a phone so they can move around and do all this kind of stuff and it'll uh, uh it'll work that way so that's probably the cheapest way to go uh but I would recommend the mic lav uh, the Rode mic lav here uh it's just it's it's a simple thing but it's it works really well when you need it to work so thanks Pete for your question uh, question number four, what do you think is the best social media platform for photographers? This is from Anne from uh, Trinity, North Carolina. Um, let's see, the best one I think for photographers, it's kind of a toss up. Uh, and it also depends on what kind of photographer you are, I guess. But it's, uh, man, I don't know if it's the best one, but it's my favorite one. Uh, Instagram is my favorite social media network. I can do without Facebook, even though we got the Facebook page, the Facebook group, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I, I, if 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 it wasn't for Facebook being so integrated, and mostly everybody has a Facebook account, I wouldn't have you know put that on there. I would have found someplace else to to gather everybody up. But um, I, I could do without Facebook as far as the Facebook page goes. Uh, Instagram is. Is probably the best one because also with that I mean you're communicating through your work that's basically what it is so uh, if you have a business Instagram account you're, you're posting the photos of, of what you do so you're not no one's having to read a post and and you know drill down to get the info and all this kind of stuff it's just boom they scroll up there's a photo and and there's your work speaking for itself that's probably the best I would say uh, for at least for me but yeah I don't I don't know of any other one that can really beat that. I know a lot of people are jumping on the Snapchat uh, train. Ah, oh, God, I I hate Snapchat. I don't I don't get it at all. Uh, I mean, I get it, I guess, but it just doesn't make any sense to me because um, it's it's kind of content that disappears. So why would you want your stuff, your work, to disappear? Uh, I know it can stay alive for like 24 hours if you do it like a Snapchat story. Um, but still, it's 24 hours, and, and Instagram it just lives out there, you know. So I don't know. That's that's my my preference on it. Twitter is just not even a thing when it comes to uh, promoting businesses because you're not really going to get that much traffic from that. So if it were me, Instagram is what I would uh, gravitate towards. Uh, let's see. Uh, second to last question here. I'm kind of running through these as fast as possible. Um, let's see. What are your thoughts on drone for drones for photography? I am a wedding photographer. I wanted to see what your thoughts would be from. Uh, gosh, I cannot pronounce that name. Azake is that from Thailand? Azak. A Z A A A Z A K A. That's I don't I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, wow. Uh, drones. Uh, I don't know about in Thailand. I have no idea. But drones here are sort of not legal for commercial use. Uh, I still don't get that, to tell you the truth. But uh, so if you're a wedding photographer, if you're doing this for, for commercial purposes, at least here in the United States, you can't do that because um, you're getting paid for work that you're doing using the drone, that sort of thing. Um, if you have an FAA license, a uh, uh, federal, some aviation, whatever, if you have one of those licenses, you can <laughs> uh, you can you can fly a drone for commercial use, but there's a lot of stuff to go through, a lot of hoops to go through with that. 
So it's almost like it's not even worth it currently. It doesn't say the rules can't change, uh, but again, that's you know, it's it's not it's a lot to go through. Uh, drones for wedding photography would be amazing. However, uh, they are very loud, so you have to worry about disrupting guests at a wedding. Uh, you have to worry about the uh, the safety factor because uh, you never know. It's a it's a piece of electronic equipment. You're flying a drone over over the the reception or something like that, and boom, just cuts off, and uh, you know an EMP happens. I don't know, <laughs> and the thing just falls from the ground and just you know chops somebody's uh, you know finger off or something. I don't know. It's it's you got to worry about that sort of thing. So. Um, as far as the artistic part of it, I think it would be amazing. You get some really cool stuff. Obviously, you have to have somebody doing that for you while you're shooting the, the wedding or vice versa. But I think it would be amazing. But is it worth all of the BS that you have to jump through? I don't, I don't think so. Again, Thailand, I have no idea. You guys, you guys can do whatever you want to. Other out, I have no idea. But, uh, but you know, that's just something. Uh, that's just what's on my mind right now about that. Uh, and the last question, uh, that is from Jamie, Jamie Torns, T-O-R-N-S, from San Antonio, Texas, and she says, I'm assuming she, might be he, sorry, <clears throat> um, if I shoot a variety of subjects, how do I section my portfolio to attract as many jobs as possible? That's a tough one. Um... First of all, I would I would say out of all the things that you shoot, find your number one. Find your main thing. If you couldn't shoot anything else for the rest of your life and you had to shoot this one specific type, what would that be? Figure that out first. That's what I would do. Um, and then highlight that as the main area of your website. So pretty much almost every page that somebody goes on, that's what it that that's what it's on. And depending on how many subjects you shoot, so let's say you're a wedding photographer. But you also do portraits. Uh, you also do, like, you do family portraits. You do pet portraits. I don't, I'm just making stuff up. Um, and then you do commercial photography or, like, product photography. Uh, definitely highlight the weddings because that's kind of like your money maker. The, uh, the, the portraits, the regular portraits, um, highlight that as well. You know, that's a separate service. Pet photography, that can be a fun little thing that you section off as well. Commercial photography, I would almost hide it in a way. You can still put it on there. Some people can stumble upon that, but I would almost like just tuck it away um, or not even include it at all and make a separate website for that. That's that's what I would do. Um, what I currently have my website on right now, and this is not the best way to do it, is if you go to my website, my portfolio website at photographynorthcarolina.com, you can go there and it's all real estate stuff. There's one tab that says projects, and that has, in, in no particular order or anything, that has all my landscape stuff that's under there. Um, so they can go to it if they want to, but most likely if they're there, they're just looking at all the real estate stuff. That's the only pot, part on the website that shows the, uh, the, the landscape stuff. But I have two domains, actually. So the domain that I've been, use, I've been using for forever and ever is my name, just jordanyants.com. And that one redirects to, so if you go to jordanyance.com, that one goes straight to the projects part of it. So when I, when I put prints out for sale or something like that, I always include the jordanyance.com URL. So when they go to that, they, it automatically goes to the projects. And I only have one website. Uh, but everything else is Photography North Carolina, and that goes to the whole website, the, the main website, the home page, and everything like that. So... Um, you could go that route and have multiple URLs. It's not going to hurt. It might actually increase your SEO a little bit, but um, but you know if you can get away with just putting whatever your money makers are on the website, then do that. that that's <sighs> trying to trying to cram too many things in one one hat is not going to work. Basically, that's that's what I I would think because you're just going to confuse people when they go there. So. Um, I was going to move on, but I'm actually going to talk about that one more <laughs> one more time. The reason I say that is because if if I go to um, okay, here's a scenario. Uh, this is going to be kind of a ramble, but when I uh, see photographers who take take photos of uh, of apartment buildings for the company that I work for, 
um, other photographers in like Texas and uh, Tennessee and all this kind of stuff. I go to their websites just to see what they what kind of work they do. I see their photos that they deliver to us, but uh, I still go to their website, check them out, see what they offer, and do all that kind of stuff. There's been multiple occasions where I go on there and the first thing I see are high school seniors, uh, Pet Portraits was one of them. Um, there was a, a basketball game. And then there's one guy, um, what did he have? He had some weird type of, I think it was, I think it was a flower, uh, a flower bowl or something. It was like a, it was like he was doing artsy, like artsy fartsy stuff, like a flower with mist on it and all this kind of stuff. Like how do you how do you get a job in real estate photography when your website when somebody hits it for the first time is that sort of crap i don't i don't get it um but on their website it does say real estate and then it says seniors and then it says you know pets or paws or something like that it just kind of keeps going on there so obviously they found them that way but to me that would just confuse the crap out of me i would i would want to when i when i search for that one topic i want to go see somebody's website that only deals with that and if I happen to find some other things, that's kind of cool too. So that's my little thing. But <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that's the questions for this week. Thank you guys. Thanks Jamie for the for the question there. And um, so the last thing, last two things I'm going to cover real quick. Uh, again, if you are listening to this and you haven't joined the Picture Monk Nation Facebook group page, uh, go to picturemonk.com/nation. That'll redirect you to Facebook and just request to be a member. I'll approve you. And uh, we can all talk and share photos and share websites and all that kind of stuff together. So that's that's kind of fun. So the widget of the week that I want to talk about is actually something that I just recently got. And uh, it was a Father's Day present to myself, but also for my dad, who is uh, who is also a photographer. And we, we basically have the same crap. That's basically what it comes down to. Um, the same photography stuff. Uh, but... We both wanted a container, a, a, a cool, like a, a, a trunk sort of thing to house all of our photography gear. So I have, you know, I have my, my tripod, my monopod, my light stands, my camera bag. I have another small bag with a bunch of accessories in it, uh, that sort of thing. I wanted a trunk to do that with. And I'm actually, it's right over this way. If you can, you can't see it, but it's right there. Um, so it, it, it's, a, it's just a, a blank uh, or a black trunk. And uh, it's it's big enough to to hold everything photography related that I have except for one except for my uh, my my slider. It's just like a half an inch too too small for it, but that's not a big deal. Um, but what it is is I bought it actually at Walmart, <laughs> uh, but I found it on Amazon as well. So if you guys want to talk want to want to look into it, it's the um, Sterilite. I'm gonna read this whole thing just to make sure you guys get it. Sterilite 18429001 foot locker, black with titanium handle, and it's just a large trunk. Uh, I have an Amazon link to it if you want to check it out, or you can just run to Walmart and find one. Um, but again, it's it's a kind of a cool thing where, you know, I I have I sometimes I have lenses over here some, and uh, there's you know there's photography junk everywhere. I have a drawer behind me here that has photography stuff in it. And so now I'm able to put it all in that one trunk and uh, it feels kind of cool to have it that way. And so when I go out to take photos of, you know, a house or something like that, or, we, or me and my dad go out and shoot, you know, I'm going to take the trunk with me and make sure I have everything with me. Um, and then I can leave that in the car and just take my bag. And just in case I wanted to bring something else, I still have it in the trunk. So that's kind of, uh, that's kind of the reason why. And, uh, and the reason why I say it was a Father's Day present was because uh, he wanted, I told him about how, how I wanted to get one. He was like, cool, give me one of those for Father's Day. And then when I went to go get one, I was like, man, I kind of want this too. But I didn't buy it. And they bought it for me. And so we ended up just keeping the one that we bought for each other and used it. So um, so that's it. That's the, that's the podcast, guys. Uh, thank you for joining me in this week's podcast. It's been, uh, it's been real. It's been fun. And so, uh, let's see, I wanted to mention one thing else. Oh, please, please, please rate, subscribe to the podcast. I've got a couple more reviews that have come in and it's just always fun reading those. Even if you hate me, please review and let me know. Um, but, uh, it's been, it, it just kind of cool reading that stuff because, you know, sometimes doing the podcast, I, I feel like I'm just boring you guys, but when I read reviews like that, it's, it's, um, 
it kind of gets me going again and a lot and and gets me gearing up for more more topics and stuff like that so uh please rate and review the po- podcast on uh, amazon or not amazon wow on itunes there it is and uh let me know what you think and uh that's it guys thank you for joining me in this week for all the show notes picturemonk.com slash pmp 060 and uh i'll see you next week guys have a good week